Hey there Wargamers, Justin the Iron Painter here and you guys are tuning in for part 5 of the Paint Mephiston tutorial series. I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in today. If this is your first time catching the Paint Mephiston tutorial series, I encourage you guys to check out my YouTube library as well as the playlist that this video is contained in. There are a lot of other parts and there will be other parts of the video that will be coming up after this one and that will give you some breakdowns on where I started to where we are today and where we're going to go. So if you are going to be tuning in today to try and get some painting in, I encourage you to grab your paintbrushes, get your paint water, and let's get started. In today's video, we're going to be tackling all the brown areas that need to be detailed on Mephiston. Specifically, he's got a couple of holsters, he's got a leather-bound book, and his leather gloves. So we're going to try and tackle those first before we get into all the other details in a future segment. Uh, when I was looking at the model here, uh, he's got a, uh, a book on his side. So uh, right down here, he's got a book and it's got some areas that need to be painted metallic. Because of that, I want to be able to do the brown first so that when we get to the metallic detail portions of this tutorial, the brown's already done. Uh, initially, I wanted to jump right in and start doing all the gold portions and things like that, and then I realized if I don't do the brown first, we're going to be backpedaling in a future tutorial. So we're going to tackle all the leather bits and brown areas on this model today, and I encourage you guys to grab your paintbrushes, get that paint water, get ready to lick some paintbrushes, and paint a model with me. Before we get started today, let's go ahead and give you guys a quick rundown of where we are on the Fista. So the previous sessions, we've clearly got him assembled. We laid down the uh, airbrushing uh, transitions, worked on a little bit of masking to get that effect, came in and worked up his cloak here, and then we uh, resaturated his robes. Um, if you guys uh, watched uh, episode one and episode two of this series, you'll know that at the end of episode one, I had desaturated this pretty uh, badly. You know, <laughs> sometimes when I'm doing these videos, I'm learning as I go as well. You know, every time you paint a model, you learn something and you progress, and uh, I'm no different. So. Um, in uh, episode two, or in tutorial session two, uh, I resaturated this and brought the colors up and did a manual transition. Uh, if you guys are good with an airbrush you or comfortable with it, uh, you could have done some of these types of things on your own and, and skipped some of those steps. So that's where we currently are on the fist on today. We're gonna be working on his gloves and he's got some um, uh, like holsters down in here. He's got a little book, things of that nature. We're gonna hit those with brown. Um, to get you uh, caught back up on where we are though, there are a few other pieces here. Uh, we've got his backpack, and in a future uh, segment, we're going to work on the extra details here, and we'll also paint that skull that's back here. That'll look good. And then uh, in a previous session, we painted up his face, did the glow effects on his eyes, and got that ready. So this is ready to be mounted to the model, uh, but we'll go ahead and do that after we've got all the other details blocked in, because I want to be able to get to all this stuff. So, uh, But for today, we're going to be working on the brown, as I said, and we're going to be using a few colors here. So primarily, uh, we're going to be working with Monster Brown from... Army Painter. Um, you guys will notice that I use uh, a variety of paints. I have a very eclectic uh, collection of them, uh, but we're going to be using this. We're using this specifically because it's a lighter brown, and that is because we want to um, have a nice transition on there very easy. So we're going to be using the Monster Brown here in conjunction with some Snake Bite Leather from the Contrast line from Games Workshop. Um, these are a very nice combo together because this is very light and this is very dark and dense. Woo, Mephiston, going for a little tumble. Let's get you out of the way while we talk about this, right, buddy? We don't want to break you. You've already crossed the Rubicon and became a Primaris Marine. What's left? If we break Mephiston, then it'll have to be a Dreadnought. We don't, we don't want that. So, um, We'll be using this because it's light. This is very dark and dense, and it's going to tone this down very well. And we're going to have this nice, bright um, kind of brown tra just transition <laughs> at the top into a dark brown in the recess. We will then come in with some of this brown mixed with a little bit of ivory to lighten it up to do some edge highlights and things of that nature. So really simple. Now, if you want to do this in a more complicated and time-consuming fashion, which I have totally done as well, you could, uh, might skip this brown and go for something dark at the beginning here, which this is uh, a totally spray painted bottle of brown from Hobby Lobby because somebody decided to spray it in the store. Uh, but we've got this um, chocolate brown. So any type of dark brown, you might use that or maybe even the uh, leather brown, which is a little bit dark as you can see from uh, Army Painter as well. And then work with um, Agrax Earthshade to shade it and then bring it back up uh, with this and this and this and try and manually do all that. But I have found that working with the contrast paints so far, this light brown with this over it, these two mixed for a highlight, uh, works really, really well and it's very simple. So let's get into that today. 
All right, to get things started, we're gonna get some of this down on our palette here. And you guys don't see this very often, so I'll give you guys a quick uh, perusal. I don't use a wet palette unless I'm doing a lot of blending, so I've got this uh, old little plastic palette from uh, Games Workshop. You can use anything like this, even a, a little paper plate or something as well. Uh, but I'll put a little bit of this on the palette here. That's probably plenty, actually, just for the sake of the tutorial, squirt a little bit more out. And then I've got a little dropper bottle here full of water with a little bit of flow aid and uh, drawing retarder. So sometimes it sticks to the side of the inside there, so give it a good shake. Um, it's not necessary, but uh, when you're working with this, instead of a wet palette, it helps keep this stuff um, um, thinned down and uh, ready to use longer. It stops the drawing process, that's what I'm looking for. Well, it's not stops, it technically slows down. So, got a few drops in there. Using a poo-poo brush here to uh, mix this up. Don't want to use a very expensive brush. And one of the benefits of having the um, the palette here like we do is once I feel like I've mixed it, I can just drag it across the edge here, which is great. But then I've got these white areas so I can kind of streak the paint and see if it looks um, like it's too translucent. Maybe I, I thinned it too much. So in that case, I feel like it's a little thin. So we'll come in, we'll add just a little bit more. Ooh, wrong one. Um, I think I just put leathered brown down, did I? Probably meant to do monster. Did I just stick it in the wrong place? We'll see, we'll see. No, okay, we're good. <laughs> almost messed up. I had grabbed the wrong brown. I stuck them in the, um, almost the same place. Uh, but we had the right one the first time. Um, or we put the, the right one down the first time. So, anyways, as I ramble here, you guys know it's what I do. If you follow me on Twitch, I do a lot of rambling. Yeah, I think that's a little bit more um, opaque, which is what we want. So, uh, we got that thinned down. And as I've explained a multitude of times on Twitch, um, when you go to thin paints, there's no real rhyme or reason. Each paint line is a little bit different and each paint within the line can be different um you just got to practice and in this case as i was saying if uh, or i've said before uh, i got a little paint on my hand there there we go um as i was saying before if uh, if you're thinning down paints and you're struggling just remember you can add a little bit of uh, whatever you're thinning with and thin it down and then uh, adjust if it feels too thin add a little bit more paint if it feels too thick add a little bit more thinner so um, if you start with just a little bit of water or thinning solution first you can always add a little bit more that's a good place to start so just practice and you will get there, I promise. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start blocking in some of this brown here. As we have done on previous steps with like edge highlights and things of that nature, we're going to be particularly careful not to hit areas that we've already worked on because then we'll have to go back and fix those. So let's go nice and easy. Keep a steady pace, but uh, don't sacrifice your, uh, your quality by going willy-nilly willy-nilly that's a very descriptive descriptive term right and as uh, you guys may know by now multiple thin coats is the way to go so uh, don't overdo it try to make sure this is thin and applied uh, very smoothly and allow it to dry and if you feel you need an extra coat give it the extra coat later you don't want it to be too thick I was worried I was too thick here but it looks like he's got beads on his wrist that I didn't notice so that's okay. And this one is closer to a lot of um, areas we really don't want to mess up. So again, just be gentle and smooth. Have a, an eye for precision here. Don't want to mess anything up. Especially don't want to hit the red or the black areas. <laughs> and honestly, I say that and uh, there's currently only really red and black on the model, except for this brown we're currently applying. So basically don't hit other areas if you can help it. Paint in the lines, you got this. I have faith in you. And the brush I'm using is one of my, I think this is the size one from Monument Hobbies. They're Bombwix uh, airbrushes, which, or not airbrushes, <laughs> paint brushes, which are my uh, go-tos right now. They're very affordable and really nice. I really like them. It's my, it's been my workhorse. It is beat up, uh, but it's still doing its job. I, uh, I generally don't lay down base coats and stuff with my uh, smaller brushes. Those are for detail. This one eventually will give out on me just given how much uh, work it does i do clean it with brush soap and conditioner but uh it is uh used very heavily so and while that dries we're gonna come in and tackle a few other other areas now that are a little bit uh, more tricky so when you come in here and you're hitting like this area just be very very careful don't want to hit any of the nice details you've already set I know by the end of this video, you guys could be like, We get it, Justin! Don't hit details we aren't supposed to! Don't keep telling us that! Well, 
The mother of learning is repetition. And sometimes I become a broken record. But if it helps you and it gets it embedded in your brain, it might be worth it. I want to see you succeed and not become frustrated if you mess something up. So patience and a little bit of uh, practice and repetition are the way to go. All right, so we've got our brown down. Now we just need to let this dry and then determine if we want to come in for another coat. All right, so this has had just a moment to dry here. I don't think we're going to need a second coat. It looks like we got pretty good coverage. So that means we're gonna be coming in with our contrast black leather, or black leather, <laughs> our contrast snake bite leather rather. Um, sometimes I could use words. So it's hard to tell on this particular one, uh, but if you look at the apothecary white here, you can see that it's settled all that pigments on the bottom. So you really have to shake the crap out of this. And let's see if you can yeah, shake, shake, shake. All right, so you can start to see a little bit of the, the pigment start to um, mix back up. So um, that's one thing I've noticed with the contrast paints. And you can't see it on this so well because it's so dense, but it's probably got a lot of pigment here at the bottom. So make sure you give this a good shake before you start using it on your models. All right, now this is shaken. Go ahead and pop that open. And we'll start applying this and a nice thin coat to the areas on the fist on here. So I'm going to start with the easy ones first. So we're going to hit the, uh, the kind of strap here that's holding his uh, syringes. And you can see how dark that, that makes this. It really tones it down. Don't be afraid to get a bunch on there. Just make sure that you smooth it out and the pooling looks right. You want to get a nice, cool transition on here. Not just maximum coverage, but you want the coat to be thin enough that you see the transition in between. And I think in this case, we're getting a pretty good coat on here and a nice coverage of the leather color we put down. And you can see why we started with the mid-tone kind of uh, brown instead of that darker brown, because this really tones it down a lot. But if you prefer a darker leather for your model, you can absolutely do that. Just use the uh, darker brown to start, and this will further darken it up and enhance it. Just giving you guys some techniques to put into your toolbox. What you do with them beyond that is up to you. All right, so we're gonna allow that. To, actually, I don't like how that's pooling right there next to his gym, so let's just sop that away. All right, cool. Let's come in here and let's hit his book. Get it right up next to his robe there. We had a little bit to his robes, which I don't want. So got our brush clean here. Sap that up as quickly as you can. That's one thing you want to do is move quick, quickly with this. So you don't, so you can uh, kind of fix things as mistakes happen. All right, so I think we've hopefully gotten most of that mess up off. This is just um, a wet brush here. I got the paint out of it, so. All right, so let's rotate them around here. Hit the front side. There we go. All right, so the book has been coated. Now let's uh, go ahead and get his little uh, necklace here, which I'm assuming was a little leather strap. Makes sense. Okay. Now I've rinsed out a brush. While it's still um, wet here, we're gonna go right up next to the edge and just try and feather it out and sop up some of the excess that we didn't want. 
I didn't want it to be too dense. There you go. Now let's come in and start with his leather glove here. Okay. Like I said, move quickly. Make sure you are uh, aware of where the pooling is and how it looks, and that it looks good uh, to you and the way you want your gloves and your leather bits on your model to look. And in this case, again, we're moving quickly and we're going around the whole model here, or not the whole model, rather the whole glove area, uh, because we want to make sure that we get this application of contrast paint on before any areas dry so we can move it around. If we had only done the front half and let it dry and then do the back half, we may get this weird transition at the in-between point. And you don't want that. You don't want that. It'll look a little bit weird. All right. Okay, now let's come in and hit this other glove. All right, now as you can see, we've got our snake bite leather applied to all the brown and leather bits on the model, but it is still shiny because it's still wet. So all we have to do is allow it to dry and then we can come in and start enhancing it with some highlights. All right, so our brown contrast paint is now dry. So the next thing we need to do is to come in and apply some highlights to enhance the leather bits and the brown bits on our model. For that, we're just gonna come back in with the same color here, which was Monster Brown from Army Painter. Now, because we darkened this up with the contrast paint, this should highlight quite nicely. So let's come in here and hit some areas on his uh, kind of necklace part first, because we'll be able to see that color. As you can see, we get a uh, little bit of a transition from the darker brown to the lighter brown. Come in here and do the same thing on this one. Now this one I'm gonna be a little bit more careful because I kind of want to have uh, edge highlights and not just color the whole area, if that makes sense. As you can see here. So only focusing on that side, and I'm gonna come here on the other side and try and use the side of the brush to build up a highlight on the top edge. There we go. And then we'll come right here, and we'll just put a little straight line, and then we'll go right up next to the gym. Shoop, shoop, shoop. And if you're feeling particularly detail-oriented, you can come in here and do some little, like, light um, lines or little scratch mark things because this is leather so it might be a little bit distressed. Do something like that. It's pretty simple. All no matter how much time you want to spend. So come over here do the same thing. You'll yeah, notice I'm kind of hitting some of the easy parts first. The gloves are going to take a little bit more time. Uh, so we're going to come in here and we're going to hit the edge of the book here. So I'm going to try and hold it at an angle and use the side of our brush. Now, if this was a book that didn't have the details right in here, we might actually add some more uh, highlights or scratch marks across the surface. So somewhere like right up here, we could do a little bit and we can do like a little, little line. Of course, we're gonna cover that later. Maybe one right here, some lines, and then kind of crisscross them. All right, so it gives the illusion that maybe the, the book has been cracked or, or scratched, something like that. Uh, but because those little uh, details that are going to be gold later are there, um, it kind of obscures some of where those scratch marks would be, which is fine because then that's less you have to hand do. But if uh, you happen to be working on a, another model with these same techniques, it's worth noting that you can add those little scratch marks real easy and make something that looks cool to add detail to a flat surface. So a lot of librarians have little books and stuff that don't have detail. They just have like a little, little clasp or something in a, a large flat area. So you can come in and add some detail of your own. Go. Now we'll come in and now it's time to start attacking the areas on the gloves. So let's start with the knuckle hand portion here. So we don't want to cover up all of the brown, we just want to hit some of the areas to enhance them. Just like that. And that's the beauty of these new models, they have such really nice ridges and recesses and details, you get this crisp area that's really easy to target without having to uh, add too much of your own. You just kind of know where you want to go. So let's come in here and rotate them a little bit. We're going to hit the edges of the fingers. There we go. Okay. 
hit the uh, the thumb here. There we go. A little bit of the palm. And we'll hit the tops of the ridges of those fingers that we kind of missed. Okay. We'll flip back around, and we've still got the whole upper side here to work on as well. All right, so let's go ahead and tackle some of the easy portions, sort of, uh, on this glove here, at least the one easy spot. So we're going to come in here, and we're going to target the top edge and drag the side of our brush very gently across that. I'm not applying a lot of pressure because I don't want to mash the paint down on there and have it smear. I just want to give enough to kind of get the paint to come off the brush and I'll leave a nice crisp edge. And it's going to take a little practice and just getting used to, but you guys can do that. I'm confident. On the uh, underside here where it starts to rotate over, we're just going to rotate the model and kind of get a a little bit of a highlight there. Kind of enhances the little bit of a, a fold or a crease. Now, as we come around on to the elbow portion of uh, his armor here, we're going to have to do a manual highlight because there's not enough um, depth in the, uh, the model to allow us to drag the brush. So right here, you're just gonna have to be very careful. So again, you don't wanna hit the red armor that we worked uh, so hard to build up in the previous steps. There we go. So not too bad, not too bad. Let's come around here. All right. And now we can use the side of our brush again to uh, finish the wrap around. Here we go. Easy piece. Now the rest of the detail work on the glove here is going to have to be kind of a little bit of imagination. So we're going to kind of add some, some scratches to it right in here. It seems like it'd be a good idea, right? Basically distressing it a little bit, you know, these gloves have been around for a long time. The fist on has slayed many a heretic and many a foe with these gloves. And as such, the leather may have cracked and scratched and over time become distressed, which is what we're going to add with these light scratch marks and stuff. It really helps enhance that. Let's come around on the other side. We do have a couple little folds here um, you can try and uh, tackle, but it looks like some of it is um, uh, some beads that are wrapped around his hand, so we'll tackle those later. And we'll come across back here. There we go, I think that looks really cool. So I'm gonna come over to the other glove and we're going to replicate the same types of effects here. So let's uh, start here. You can kind of see where some of the highlights naturally would be by the way the contrast paint pulled. So we're going to kind of apply some of our focus in those areas. Just like in the other one, we're going to use the side of our brush when we can to hit the edges of the glove that are a little bit more sharp. So they uh, pick up that crisp highlight easily. Again, when you're doing this, just use your best judgment and try and use it in areas that you can achieve it uh, without actually hitting other areas on the model. Again, don't wanna mess up anything that we've worked hard on previously. With our highlights now dry, we can come in for our final highlight on the model. For that, we'll be using our Monster Brown and Ivory mix that I mentioned before. I did two parts Monster Brown to one part Ivory. Uh, you can adjust this to your liking, no big deal, but this is what we're gonna be using today. It's gonna be a little bit brighter, <laughs> a lot bit brighter if I'm honest, 
but contrast is always a good thing. So come in here, we're gonna start on this little necklace, hit the high point right here. Just add a little bit more color. You can see how that kind of enhances that. Come down here, and uh, I have switched up brushes too. I'm using a very, very uh, fine brush here. I'm just gonna hit some of the rouges that should be a bit brighter, the, the high, extreme high spot, so to speak. And you could totally skip this stuff if you wanted to. I just like to add a little bit more to uh, my models. In this case, that's what we're doing. I hit uh, some of the scratch marks a little bit here, just enhance those. There we go. Come in here and use these same techniques on this side. Left a little gap here so we could put some little scratch marks. I think that looks really nice. In here I'm gonna hit some areas on the book the areas where we think the light is going to be hitting and leave the rest of it alone so drape down here to the bottom corner so we we just hit the uh, points here seems like the areas where the uh, maximum light would hit it's down here and just a little bit right there some of these may not be 100% perfect in terms of light source but sometimes you gotta Got to use your best judgment and exaggerate. Gonna hit a couple of these scratch marks as fine as we can, just to add a little enhancement. There we go. It makes it look like you get fresh scratches versus uh, older scratches. We'll come in here to the gloves and kind of hit the same things. Enhance the uh, areas the light's going to hit. Just like so. I'm trying to leave some of that previous highlight through. That's the intent here. And when I'm working with uh, this particular brush, I do a lot of like um, press down and as I'm pulling a highlight, I'll drag back ever so slightly so that the you get a little bit of a taper or a gradient, so to speak. That's what I like to do. It takes a little bit of practice, but you could do it. You can do it. Hitting the tops of those knuckles there. And we'll hit the ridges of the second row of knuckles here. And I think that's where we'll stop on the, the fingers, because, or at least this side of the fingers, because don't want to overdo it. In some of these areas that I'm hitting on his wrist, I feel like I thought they were rolls in his gloves, but I think these might actually be bracelets. So in the next video, if I do determine that's what they are, when looking at the reference image again, which I totally should have in front of me and I don't, then we may be actually covering up the, the light brown we've done here. We'll see. I think that's looking really nice. We've got these nice kind of leather transition, or <laughs> nice leather colors transitions into a bright highlight. Easy peasy. You guys can do that. Actually, you know what? At this point in the video, I'm noticing we missed hitting his uh, holster as well. Fortunately, still got plenty of wet paint. So we can just hit that as well. Look at that. Glad I noticed that. Yeah, in a rush to get to the gloves, if I'm honest, the gloves were the kind of highlight of this video for me. I was really excited to work on those. So, um, I totally forgot his holster, which is also obscured. And honestly, if he had only hit this with brown and then like a wash, the highlights may have not even been necessary because some people might not even see it. But you guys know me, I have an eye for detail and I like to focus on stuff. So we're gonna get a little bit in there. And now I'm working a little bit quickly here um, and did not allow that to fully dry, but I'm coming in real quick to apply that highlight while we're here. Cause I'm worried that if I move on, and allow that to dry that I'll forget to come back because we're in the middle of filming. So let's just go ahead and hit that while we're here. All right, so we've got our dark brown into light brown transitions and highlights, and I think this is looking pretty good, especially after we got that holster adjusted as well, which I was gonna forget. Um, but if you find that these highlights are just a smidge too light for your liking, or you find that uh, it's a bit too much contrast, there is something that you can do. And for that, we can come in with a little bit of Agrax Earthshade thinned down just to lightly tint the surface like a glaze. So let's go ahead and do that and see what it looks like. 
So with our highlights now dry, we can come in and apply that glaze mix of Agrax Earthshade that I was mentioning before. Now I mixed uh, two parts Agrax Earthshade to one part glaze medium from Vallejo and one part matte varnish from Liquitex. Now uh, you can mix this uh, in any ratio that you like, but I highly recommend when you're mixing your washes from Games Workshop that you don't use water. I've had issues where the uh, water kind of somehow interacts with the pigments in the medium and separates it and then you get this weird crusty look when it dries and it's just not good. So I stay clear of that. Uh, but with that being said, we're going to come in with our mix here and we're just going to apply this generously across the top. Make sure that we don't hit areas we don't want to hit and uh, make sure that we avoid any excessive pooling that we don't like. It should help tint everything and bring it back together with a little bit of a brown look. in here and hit uh, this little leather strap here. Let's hit this one here as lightly as we can because we don't want to wash the model. We're just trying to tint the uh, necklace portion there. Hitting this last glove. And just like that, we've allowed the wash glaze mix here to dry. And I did totally pull out the reference image here and it looks like there are no bracelets on him it's just the uh, enhanced like folds in his leather so i went in and added a couple quick highlights to his wrist here and enhanced that one a little bit but i think with that glaze uh kind of wash thing mixed this is looking really nice so the only thing left for it well i don't say the only thing we've got a bunch left to do uh so there's going to be several more segments here but uh coming up in the next uh a uh, couple of videos we're going to be tackling the gold portions of the model here as well as the skeletal uh, bits and all the beige the white areas on his armor here like the wings the blood drops all the little details we've also got to attack the metallics the add the glow lightning effect to his weapon and hit the base so we've got quite a bit to go uh in, in terms of finishing this model and hopefully you guys will tune in for that but on that note i think we're going to be finished for this segment so let's go ahead and wrap up with today's tutorial I'd like to thank you guys for hanging out with me during uh, part five of our part five, not 10, five, five <laughs> of our Paint Fist on tutorial series. I hope you learned something from this. I know it was something basic where we're just covering the leather and brown bits of the model, but that's something uh, that you can use on all of your models. There's plenty of areas in the GW miniature line as well as pretty much anything, especially fantasy minis. You've got a lot of leather, a lot of leather areas. Uh, let's get a little tongue twister. Love me. A lot of leather areas and bits on uh, those miniatures in the fantasy line from a variety of games that uh, these techniques would uh, be super beneficial for you guys on. Now, if you followed along in this video today or you liked what you saw, if you have any thoughts, concerns, critiques, anything at all, I encourage you to sound off in the comments below. If you did follow along or you've used these techniques on some miniatures of your own and you'd like to share that work with us, I encourage you to sound off in the comments below with an Instagram link to some photos or perhaps check out our uh, Facebook and or Discord groups, links in the description below, where you can share uh, your photos with us and uh, in the community, and we can see it. Uh, depending on when you share it, I do uh, showcase miniatures every Sunday night during my hobby hangout slash community showcase stream, and we'd love to showcase what you've been working on with the community, especially if you've been following any of my tutorials, because I like to see what you did, see if I was actually able to help teach you. If there's anything that I can improve upon or anything you'd like to see, again, I encourage you guys to sign up below. Let me know what you think. Let me know what I can do to improve and uh, what other things you'd like to see me cover in upcoming tutorials. But as always, we are up at the end of the tutorial, the end of the video session for today. And that means we've got some obligatory self-promotions, shameless self-promotions we need to get through. So first and foremost, if you enjoyed this video, I encourage you to like it, subscribe, smash that little bell so you can learn when I put up new content and make sure you're on the lookout when that stuff comes out. We'd love to have you a part of the Garrison community here on YouTube, Facebook, and Discord. And uh, hopefully, hopefully you'll hit those buttons. Hopefully you'll come back and watch more content. I've also got battle reports and so forth I'm so forth I'm working on as well. And perhaps those will be entertaining and engaging for you uh, in addition to the tutorials. 
If you'd like to help support the channel, I encourage you to check out DeathRedesigns.com. Coupon code GETAMPS10 will save you 10% on your order, and a portion of those proceeds will come back to me. Help keep, helps keep the lights on, helps keep me employed so that I can continue to produce content for you guys, which I love to do. And finally, if you'd like to be a super supporter, we do have a Patreon page, and your contributions there, however large or small, uh, do have a direct impact on what I'm able to do here. And without the contributions of my patrons, this video here on YouTube would not be possible. Uh, this particular video series has been uh, sponsored by Wheels, uh, Chris Oaks, from the garrison uh, every month we're trying to get at least one tutorial uh, uh finished filmed edited and up there uh, live for you guys and it's because of him that this video is possible and all of our battle reports currently the well all of them the the one battle report a month we're currently uh trying to always strive for has been funded by uh clan wolf uh david from the community so big shout out to you guys my patrons for able to support me as we move forward, uh, hopefully we'll be able to do more tutorials, more unboxing reviews, more product uh, reviews, things of that nature, and hopefully do some more games. I've got a lot of big plans here, and uh, you guys being behind me helps push things forward and helps the content creation grow. So hopefully you guys will continue to watch these and support what I do. Uh, finally, if you aren't currently following me on Twitch and you've somehow made it to YouTube, I encourage you to check out my Twitch channel. I do live stream three to four days a week uh, painting minis. And like I said before, we do showcase miniatures every Sunday night from you guys, the community, to give you guys some time to shine. So we'd like to see you guys over there. In closing today, I'd like to encourage you guys to be on the lookout for part six of the Paint Mephiston tutorial series. So you guys can uh, continue to follow along the progress here in regards to what I'm doing and hopefully learn some new techniques. But on that note, uh, we're going to get through this, uh, this long, shameless self-promotion part of the video now. We're going to get ready to sign off. As always, I'd like to encourage you guys to keep painting those models, keep rolling those dice, and I'll catch you next time. Mm -hmm.